sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Now with Nebula. Did you ever think Apple was deleting the lightning port just so they could make iPhone lucky number 13 thinner? Like the opposite of thick thinner, like a credit card, like 2D. I'm kidding, I swear. But earlier this week, supply chain exfiltrator extraordinaire Guo Mingqi dropped another spoiler bomb and I had so many questions, I made a whole video about it yesterday. Well, it turns out some of you had even more questions, especially about the rumor that Apple would be deleting the lightning port on the pro level iPhones come 2021. So follow up time. I'm Renee Ritchie and this is Vector. Would deleting lightning be better for security? While many of you all caps hated the idea of losing lightning because of how many lightning cables and accessories you'd accumulated over the last many years, the others hated the idea of Apple taking lightning away but not putting USB-C in its place. Still, a very, very few of you asked if going portless would have a potentially big side benefit, security. In other words, if there's no lightning port and no USB-C port or any other interconnect to replace it, but just no port period, would it make it more difficult for anyone to tether, to plug in over a hard line and break into your iPhone? That includes jailbreaking, but also companies that sell exploits and nation states that want into devices legally or extra legally. The short answer is yes and no. There's always tension between security and convenience. If you remove a door and put in a wall, you make it much harder for everyone and anyone to get in, including you. So literally no port means no way to tether to try and break in for a bad actor, but also no way to tether and try to recover or reset a device that's just gone bad. Which is why Apple's previous quote unquote portless devices, which I went over in the previous video, the Apple Watch and Apple TV 4K, both actually have sealed and or hidden ports in them for service techs to use if they have to try to diagnose or reset a device. They're just not user accessible there'll still have to be some way to do that with an iPhone as well. So whether Apple goes truly portless and creates some facility for wireless recovery, or they add a sealed port somewhere on the outside or hide a port inside, those aren't really walls. They're just much more secure, less convenient doors, like doors without handles. Could Apple replace lightning with something else? Now, within 3.2 microseconds of any Apple deleting lightning rumor hitting the naked internet, we get every reaction from the more mainstream, you touch my lightning port and I will cut you, to the more nerdy, yes, USB-C at last. But Guo's spoiler bomb was rather specifically targeted. Among new second half 21 iPhone models, we expect that the highest end model would cancel the lightning port and provide the completely wireless experience. So unless Quo has it completely wrong, which is completely possible, completely wireless means, yeah, no wires, no lightning, no USB-C, no nothing. And as that started to settle in, our collective state of grief turned from denial and anger to bargaining. Because we all have stuff we just want to plug in. Lightning is used for so many things after all. iPhones, of course, but also all iPads except for Pro, the Magic Keyboard and mouse and trackpads on the Mac, the Apple TV Siri remote, the Apple Pencils, EarPods, AirPods, no, I'm not gonna forget about Dre. AirPods have added inductive charging, but they still have Lightning as well. So far, only the Apple Pencil 2 has gone from Lightning to inductive only, but that's way simpler and less critical to the vast majority of people than their phones and all the accessories that go with them. CarPlay has been getting a ton of attention and it makes sense. First, most people don't get new cars that often. So there's a big difference between replacing our ear pods with AirPods for a couple of hundred bucks and our current ride with our next one for thousands and thousands or more. Also, the traditional automotive industry is pretty much the exact opposite of the tech industry when it comes to speed of deployment. Wireless CarPlay was announced as part of iOS 9 back in 2015. So while there are over 500 models of cars that support CarPlay now, the amount that support wireless CarPlay is just a tiny, tiny fraction. But really, it could be anything. That old VGA projector at work or school, that camera connection kit while on vacation, that external mic, or yeah, that PC when you really do need to go into recovery mode. So, bargaining. If not Lightning or USB-C, maybe the smart connector like on the iPad. It's not really a port, is it? Maybe Apple could make a version of that for the iPhone so that accessories, including a USB adapter, could just magnetically snap right on. 
Yeah, sure, just one more thing on the Palm did it first list with the Veer, but since so many smart folks from Palm went back to Apple afterwards, why not? And that would totally still be wireless, right? I mean, Apple calls inductive Qi chargers wireless, and while they snap onto the device magnetically, they still have big old wires hanging off the backs to plug into the walls. It's like wink, wink, nudge, nudge wireless. And would that work? I mean, maybe. I might be wrong, but I don't think the current smart connector is water resistant, so that at least would have to change. It also only has three pins, data, power, and ground. By way of comparison, the old dock connector had 30 pins. Lightning has eight. So unless it also comes with a super smart connector, it probably won't be able to do everything Lightning could. And that includes higher power delivery and anything requiring more pins. And of course, it may not need to, given Bluetooth 5 and Wi-Fi 6 and ultra wideband already in current iPhones. If it just handles a few things, like some new accessories, USB adapters for older accessories, including CarPlay, and recovery when and if needed, it could be enough. That's if Apple, who've already been talking about the future being wireless for half a decade already, doesn't really just want to pull all the plugs and force us all into the last stage of grief. Acceptance. Could there be wireless dongles? When Apple switched from the dock to lightning, they had 30 pin adapters ready to go. Late, but ready. Same with USB-C on the Mac and 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks on iPhones. Sure, AirPods took slightly longer than expected, but we got them too. Third parties like 12 South have even made wireless to 3.5 millimeter adapters so you can use your AirPods on airplanes, which update even more glacially than cars. So worst case, if the iPhone really does go airtight, there'll almost certainly be air plugs to go with it. And yeah, we'll be living that wireless dongle life, just kicking back and wirelessly watching some curiosity stream. And now Nebula to go with it. Nebula is the video platform built by and for independent creators like Thomas Frank, Captain Midnight, Sarah Z, Patrick H. Williams, Low Spec Gamer, and yours truly. We're building it because we want a place for education creators to try out new, original content ideas. Ideas that just might not work so well on YouTube. Not these days anyway. Or for privacy-centric people who simply don't want to watch on YouTube. And because it now comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series like Bright Now and the Coffee Buzz episode, where experts reveal some of the surprising secrets that make your favorite coffees taste the way they do. By signing up, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can just create exactly the type of content you really want us to create. Go to curiositystream.com vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and now, Nebula as well, and enter the promo code VECTOR to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Now, there is many a twist twixt a spoiler and a ship, so we'll have to wait and see how the 2021 iPhones Pro really pan out. I mean, we're still three quarters of a year away from the new 2020 flagships, but rumor's gonna rumor. So if you like this video, please hit the button and share it so more people find out about the channel. It really helps. Subscribe if you haven't already and dongle that bell gizmo so YouTube will actually alert you when future shows go live. Then hit up the comments and let me know. Any more questions, any better answers? I'd love to hear it all. Thanks for watching. See you next video.